Hi, Peter Charles here of uh, Hook for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to look at my six essential smallmouth bass flies. Now, if you saw my previous uh, video on six essential trout flies, you know I was very specific about patterns and how they're going to be used. Here, it's going to be a little bit more generic. I'm going to talk more about types, uh, but we will get into some specific patterns as well that I feel work extremely well. So let's get started with probably the one we always think about when it comes to smallmouth bass, and that's the deer hair popper. Uh, it doesn't get a whole lot better than a deer hair popper. My personal best smallmouth came on a deer hair popper, uh, and it was uh, 24 and a quarter inches long, and we kind of estimated the weight somewhere between seven and eight pounds. Now that was quite the fish, and it came out of deep water to nail that popper too. So uh, you can get some amazing action on a deer hair popper. Uh, and, you know, really, it's a good first uh, fly for smallmouth if you want to get into smallmouth, especially if you're fishing lakes in the evening, in the morning. Uh, deer hair poppers work beautifully. Um, they're quite rugged, too. I find they're more rugged than the, uh, the plastic versions, which get chipped and damaged very easily. A couple of things about poppers. First off, I don't tie my own poppers anymore. I used to. I gave up on that. You know, bad thumbs, lots of mess. I just buy them now. Uh, the second thing is, we have to think of how the a bass sees a popper. Uh, I mean, this one's all pretty colors. The reality is that's what the bass is seeing. And it's seeing it in silhouette against the sky, the bright sky. So I think the top colors are an awful lot less important uh, than the actual silhouette of the fly and the, the way it creates a wake, the way it moves water. I wouldn't get too hung up on getting really, really pretty poppers. I mean, I use a lot of um, gurglers as well for uh, striped bass, and I sh could use them for smallmouth as well. And I find that color doesn't seem to mean much, except for white. White seems to do really well, but in the, in the evening, black, anything. Anything you like, it'll work. So let's look at the next one. Well, the woolly bugger uh, made my trout list. It's gonna make my smallmouth bass list as well. I mean, how can you go wrong? This one's been fished a lot. It's kind of beaten up. It's got a few fish, but I mean, I might as well put the, the winners on here, not the losers. Uh, just a, you know, this generic olive woolly bugger, gold cone or gold bead, Oh, can you catch fish on this fly? It's ridiculous. They re it really, really does well. So if I was going to go for like a popper and something that sinks, I would be looking at a weighted woolly bugger as being my weighted fly that's going to get down. And, uh, you know, just olive, gold cone, gold, gold bead. You'll whack a ton of fish on those. So next, on to the next one. Well, I think we've all been... Uh, uh, well aware of the, the clouser. It's it's a great fly and uh, it catches a whole host of species, but it's originally associated with smallmouth bass fishing. This is kind of like my baby bass uh, clouser pattern, and but you can, you know, pick them, you know, you, you know, there are a lot of good color combinations and usually just keep them counter shaded, dark over light, uh, and they work fine. Chartreuse, uh, black over chartreuse, you know, uh, olive over white, lots of different color combinations are going to work. And uh, the, the fly gets down, fishes, fishes is extremely well. And it's a long fly uh, with a relatively short hook. Don't worry about it. Bass go after the head of a fly. They, they target the eyes, which is one of the reasons why clouses work. They have eyes. They target that and, and that's why you hook them up, even though you've got this fly that's two to three times longer than the hook shank that they still hook up quite well with it. And uh, this along with the woolly bugger would be my essential sinking flies. So on to the next. Now this is my one of my patterns. Uh, it's my crayfish pattern. And I don't think you can really uh, do justice to a smallmouth fishery without at least one crayfish pattern in your uh, fly box. Uh, it also is a multi-species uh, fly. This particular uh, type of fly has taken carp, sheep head, um, rock bass, smallmouth, I'm forgetting something, uh, it's taken a bunch of different fish. So uh, you can really effectively fish smallmouth uh, with crayfish patterns and do extremely well. Um, this is a very simple pattern uh, and as you can see it's designed to ride hook point up. Um, 
and it, uh, well, you see I can put the eyes underneath the point, which is a very unusual place to put them, but it gets it that head down attitude, you know, it sits it down like that and then it will settle on its tail with its claws up. It does work quite well when you just bump it along the bottom. It really works well. And those rubber legs, they just vibrate. You know, that's, uh, this is the first pattern I'm showing with rubber legs. But, uh, rubber legs and smallmouth, they just go together like uh, peanut butter and jam. <laughs> it's, 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 it's unbelievable how well you sh shove some... Uh, Woolly, uh, rubber legs on a woolly bugger like this when you take this woolly bugger just add rubber legs you've just increased the uh, fishiness of the fly it's amazing uh, I'm a big believer in putting rubber legs on flies for uh, smallmouth okay the next one yeah if anybody you know if you fish smallmouth a lot you know how uh, good rabbit works a rabbit strip wing works for smallmouth it just undulates and moves so seductively. And my favorite smallmouth uh, fly for uh, using a rabbit strip wing is my headstander pattern. It's just an absolute dynamite pattern. It's caught a ton of fish for me already, and I haven't had it that many years. It's only been, what, a couple of years old, I think. And I, I've been whacking fish with it every season. Uh, it, uh, you can bounce along the bottom because it's tied on a jig hook, or you can fish it higher up in the water column. And because of the way this uh, fly is put together, it tends to nose down uh, under tension. So when you're stripping it, it's not quick to come up, which is very, very handy if you're fishing on a floating line. You can keep this fly fairly low uh, without worrying about when you're stripping it, it's gonna pop up to the surface like some flies will. So this is a super pattern, I mean, <laughs> Uh, it's ridiculous how well this thing works and and if you just you know strip it slowly it just jigs along you know just amazing pattern and, it, and it's sort of a goby uh pattern also it sort of imitates some of the small sucker species as well so you know a lot of the fish small bait fish that smallmouth uh, go after look something like this so on to my last one Again, one of my patterns, this is my brown trout weemer, though I should rename it and call it smallmouth candy. It's ridiculous how uh, smallmouth love this fly. And this is different from the other flies I've put in here, that it is not weighted, it's on a very light hook. And so this moves very, very well in slow currents and modest currents. It, you can swing this in relatively slow currents and it still looks great, still rides level. And um, it'll work stripped, you can strip it in faster currents. The thing is, if I want to get this fly down, I normally fish it on an intermediate or a sinking line. So it's a very, very effective pattern. I've done it very, very well with the uh, brown trout weemer. And as I say, I designed it for uh, brown trout fishing on the Upper Grand, uh, but I've ended up catching a ton of smallmouth with it. And another 12 species to boot on top of that. I mean, it has just caught everything under the sun. It's been an enormous uh, success for me. As I say, up to 14 species of fish this thing has caught. So uh, it's a very, very effective pattern. And on that light wire hook, it just dances in the current. And uh, as I say, you do need to get it down. If you want to fish it low, you have to use an intermediate or full sinking line. But other than that, you know, you could fish it right underneath the surface and watch the fish come up and cream it. Anyway, so those are my six flies. And, you know, when I pick up my pattern box, it's amazing how often that the only ones I pick out are these flies. I don't, you know, I've got others in here, and yeah, I use them. The bass bunny bug, for example, gets a fair bit of use. Uh, and there's a few others in here. Um, I've got some muddlers. Uh, my twitch fly is very uh, good. That works quite well. But the reality is, these are the ones I tend to grab. So give them a try. They really do work. And I've done really, really well with smallmouth going back the last you know, 20, 25 years of fishing this area for smallmouth bass. You know, consistently, these patterns have produced time and time again. Uh, so give them a try. Cheers.